Hi there, this is Noah with the Marketing and Training Department. This is part two of our Knockerball Fast Start video training series. In this video, we're going to talk about the ordering process and how to get the most out of it using add-ons, both required and suggested add-ons for getting needed information about the order and upselling. Now, before I dive into that, I want to encourage you to like and subscribe to the ERS YouTube channel so you never miss out on any important updates, and you can do that by clicking on our logo in the lower right-hand corner of this video. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and get rolling. All right, so I am going to open up the live website front end in a separate browser tab, and I'm going to go ahead and click here to start placing an order so we can observe the ordering process. Now, the customizability starts from the very beginning. So this is what we call the order by date process. So it's going to, as you can see, it's going to give us shopping instructions, and then it's going to prompt us to choose the date and time of our party. But this is customizable, right? That book now button doesn't have to lead to the order by date page. Some people feel really adamant that when your customer clicks on that book now button, the first thing they want to see is your inventory, your stuff, right? So we can do that, right? We, that button can lead wherever you want it to. So this is one of those things where you just want to go through this process in your folder and take screenshots and detailed notes as you go so that you can reach out to the tech support department and say, hey, I'd like this to do this instead, and I'd like this to look like that instead, etc., so that we can help you get this process looking and feeling exactly like you want it to. Now, as I mentioned, these are instructions for your customers to order, and you can see that they actually tell you where to edit the text. It's going to be at admin, rules, price rule sets. So that's here, admin rules, price rule sets. And you can see that's where you would go to edit that text. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a date. Let's go with the first Saturday in October. Now, once again, this is also customizable. So this is what we call time span ordering. It's where your customers pick a start and end time for their party. And the price rule sets are going to adjust pricing based on the length of their party and all that good stuff. That said, some people don't like that. Some people prefer time slots. Or uh, maybe you just want your customers to pick a date and you have kind of one time slot that you would, you know, you pick up and deliver your stuff. So we can handle it however you want it to. So once again, just take screenshots as you go and tell us what you want and we'll help you do it that way. So let's go ahead and add the up to six knocker balls event package to our order. Now this is what we call a required add-on. So it gives us needed information about the order. So let's say we've got two adults and four kids and then we're gonna go ahead and submit this. And once the cart page loads, we're going to see a suggested add-on. So required add-ons are required. You have to fill them out in order to continue. Suggested add-ons are intended for upselling like this. So the customer could just ignore them and click here to continue shopping or here to check out. But they're intended, like I said, for upselling. So there's some cool stuff we can do with this. So, for example, I can add this water slide to my order. And then it's going to show me the same suggested add-on because... All of these items, we just have one uh, add-on that we use for suggested add-ons for upselling, but we can get more strategic with it. So for example, here, if I've, if I've got somebody who's already added knocker balls and a water slide to their order, I might try to try to convince them to get a concession machine of some kind. So let's go ahead and add a snow cone machine to our inventory and create an add-on and assign it to this water slide item so that we can get a little more strategic with the way that we upsell. So I'm going to go back into the back end, and I'm going to go to Admin Products Items. And I'm going to go ahead and click here to add some new items. So I'm going to add a snow cone machine. Let's say $99 for that snow cone machine rental. Let's say I've just got one of them in inventory. And I'm going to go ahead and put this particular item in the concessions and add-ons category. And I think that ought to do it for the moment. I'm going to go ahead and submit my changes here. And I'm going to go ahead and add some snow cone syrup to my folder. Now I'm going to use a special display name because I want it to just... We're going to use this in a required add-on to prompt people to choose their one free flavor. They've got one free flavor with a snow cone machine rental. And I don't want it to say cherry snow cone syrup. I just want it to say cherry, grape, lemon, lime. So we're using a special display name. This is for the back end. This is for customer facing. So it's going to cost nothing. So I'm actually going to leave that field blank. 
Let's say I've got a hundred of them in stock. And let's go ahead and add a picture. And we are going to put this in the hidden category. Now, I do want to be able to upsell additional snow cone syrup for a cost, so we're going to use packages for that. We're going to leave this cost field blank because, again, this is the version that's intended to go with the snow cone machine as their free flavor. So we're, that's why we're leaving the cost field blank here, but we will, in a little bit here, use packages to create a version of this that we can use for upselling. So, going to go ahead and submit my changes here. And I'm going to go ahead and write in snow cone into the search field to narrow down what I'm looking at here and make this a little bit more manageable for myself. So I've also got grape and lemon lime, and I'm going to save myself time by using the copy feature. By the way, when you click that little copy button, to make sure that you are creating a copy, just look for the words creating copy. Okay, so we're going to change out grape for cherry. Got to change out the picture. And I'll go ahead and submit my changes here. And we'll go one more time for the people. And now I need to create the add-on that is going to prompt my customers to choose their free snow cone syrup flavor when they get the snow cone machine. So I need to go to Admin, Products, Items, I'm sorry, Add-ons, and I'm going to click here to add a new add-on, and we're going to call this Snow Cone Free Flavor Choice. And we're going to put a little customer-facing text in here. And that should be good to go. Now we need to assign that add-on as a required add-on to the snow cone machine item. So we're going back into admin products items. We're clicking into that snow cone machine item. And we're going to scroll all the way down to required add-ons. And we're going to say they get one free flavor choice. Then we're going to go ahead and submit our edits. Oh, and I forgot an important thing. I want this snow cone machine to go in the same add-on that is showing here. I want the snow cone machine to be in this suggested add-on. So I'm going to go ahead and add another item to this add-on. And I'm going to make it be the snow cone machine. Okay, so we are set up now. Now we'll come back into our cart and refresh the page. And yep, there is our snow cone machine. So let me just explain the logic there because we did a whole bunch of stuff just now and I want to try to just spell it out to make sure that it's 100% clear. So we added the snow cone machine to this add-on right here, the standard add-on. And then we created an add-on for the required add-on. To prompt our customers to choose their free syrup flavor. And we added that required add-on to the snow cone machine item so that when customers put the snow cone machine item in their cart, they will see this prompt. By the way, required add-ons don't always show the pictures by default. If you would like them to show the pictures, if you're not seeing pictures with your required add-ons and you would like to see them, you can enable that feature at Admin, Order Config, Miscellaneous Order Settings, and do a Command F or Control F for the word required. By the way, Command F on a Mac or control F on a PC is a super useful technique. It's not just in the ERS system. In any computer program or web page, you can do a command F again on a Mac or a control F on a PC. That F stands for find to find text on that page. Super helpful to find stuff. So it's display required add-on pictures. So if you're not seeing the, the pictures for your required add-ons, just go ahead and check that little box and then scroll down to the bottom of the page and click save. 
Okay, so let's go with cherry. I like that fake red cherry flavored stuff. I also like the fake grape purple flavored stuff. And now we're seeing the same suggested add-on. Now why is it not showing the water slide and the snow cone machine in this add-on? Well, because I already put, I only have one of the water slides and one of the snow cone machines, and they're already both in this order, so they're no longer available. So, we can get more strategic. We can do yet another add-on, another add-on that we'll use as a suggested add-on, to try to prompt people to buy more snow cone syrup. We're sort of trying to simulate how we would upsell for people on the phone, right? Somebody gets a snow cone machine, we, we say, hey, what, what flavor syrup would you like? And then... Probably one of the next things we would say is, hey, would you like some extra syrup? How about some grape? How about some lemon lime? So let's do that. So we're going to go into the back end again. We are going to go to admin products items. We're still in our search, so that's kind of helpful. We are once again going to use the copy feature. That's going to save us some time. We're going to copy the cherry snow cone syrup item. And we need to make sure to give it a different name. That's very important. You never want two items in your folder to have the same name. That can create problems. Once again, we are going to use special display name. In the back end, we want it to say additional cherry snow cone syrup. For our customers, we just want it to say cherry snow cone syrup. And here's the important thing. We are going to change this product to a package. Now, before I do that, I want to point something out. See this quantity field? Let's watch what happens to it when I change this to a package item. It disappears. Now why did it do that? The reason it did that is because we just have one store of cherry snow cone syrup. We're not pulling from this store for the free syrup and this store for the upsold syrup. It's all just cherry snow cone syrup. We need it to all come from the same inventory. So we're using packages for that purpose. So we're going to tell the system that what's in this package is one cherry snow cone syrup. Now that's almost all we need to do here. The one other thing is, I do want this item to show up as something that people can add to their order. I don't want this to be a hidden item. I want people to be able to, if they're looking in my concessions and add-ons category, see that they can get more additional cherry snow cone syrup. So I'm going to go ahead and submit. This item. Now once again, I just want to reiterate that the reason that that quantity field disappears when you make an item into a package item is because it's looking at the availability of the items that make up that package. So in this case, it's the cherry snow cone syrup. We have a hundred of these. And when we upsell, we need it to draw from this inventory. Again, we just have one store of cherry snow cone syrup. So we need it to pull from there. So that's what packages do. They allow us to manage our inventory's availability while using a given item in multiple different forms. So a really common use of this, for example, is bounce houses with banners. So if you have a modular bounce house and you have, let's say, a Spider-Man banner and a princess banner and a pirate banner, well, let's say you've got two of those bounce houses and one each of the banners. Well, so you use packages. You put your modular bounce house in as an item, maybe a hidden item, or maybe you rent it out just plain also. It's up to you. And then you put in your banners as hidden items, and then you make a package with the bounce house and a pirate banner to be a pirate bounce house item, right? And then you put in the bounce house and a princess banner for it to be a princess bounce house item, and you get the idea. So then in your store, you see pirate bounce house, princess bounce house, Spider-Man bounce house. Now you only have two of those bounce houses, right? So when someone rents a Spider-Man bounce house, and then someone else during that same time rents a princess bounce house, well now all three of the bounce houses show up as unavailable because the package is looking at the availability of the items that make up the package, and you only have two of the bounce houses, so that means it can't make that third package. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and copy our snow cone syrup package, our cherry snow cone syrup package, I should say. We're going to change out cherry for grape once again. Oh, you know what? I made a mistake. All right, we'll fix it in just a moment here. I am going to copy this grape item and going to change out grape for lemon lime. That sound you just heard was my cat coming into my house. Not to worry. I'm not being robbed.
All right, and what I forgot to do with the other two additional snow cone syrup items is I forgot to put a cost in there. Remember, we're using this for upselling, so it's not the free version, right? This one's actually going to cost them 10 bucks per. So I'm going to make my edits quickly by going into spreadsheet mode. It's going to enable me to make my edits from this screen rather than having to click into each individual item, load the page, submit, wait for the page to load again. You get the idea. It's just faster to make edits from here. Okay, now I'm going back into browse mode because it's a nicer view if you're not making edits from this screen. All right, so we've got all of our additional package items created that are going to enable us to upsell. Now we need to create another add-on and attach it to these items so that we can upsell properly. So let's go back into admin products add-ons. And let's go ahead and copy the standard suggested add-on. And let's remove snow cone machine from this add-on because we know if we're prompting people to buy additional snow cone syrup, we know that they already added a snow cone machine to their order. So we're going to remove that from the order. We're going to click here to add two more lines in the add-on. We're going to move all of the blank ones up by clicking on the little blue and white cross icons. And by the way, when we do that to move things, see that little black line? That tells us where we're moving something. So we're going to add the additional cherry snow cone syrup and grape and lemon lime to this and we're going to say how about some more snow cone syrup a water slide or interactive game will help take your event to the next level okay so now we've got another oh i forgot to change the name of the add-on that could cause some problems We're going to call this additional snow cone flavors and submit our changes. All right, then we're going to go back into admin products items. Once again, we are going to go into spreadsheet mode. And we are going to change the suggested add-on for each of our free snow cone syrup items to be this one. All right, we should be good to go now unless I overlooked something or made a mistake. Let's go back into the front end. Let's refresh our screen. Yep, here we go. Okay, so we've covered add-ons at this point. There's a couple more little tips and tricks I want to show you for how to most efficiently use your ERS folder, and then we'll review everything briefly and we'll wrap this video. So I'm going to click back into the back end and just show you a couple more things. So we've already talked about searching, using the search field to narrow down what you're looking at to make things more manageable. And there's also spreadsheet mode, which allows you to make edits right here from this screen and save time. And there are a couple of other things that we can do in here. So for example, we can click here to organize everything by name. So it was ascending order by name and now it's descending. Or did I get that backwards? Anyway, you know what I mean. And we can click here on any of these other categories to reorder them by category. Now we can do this in spreadsheet mode or browse mode. Now another thing that we can do is we can use the customize field. So you can see admin products items in particular. This is the biggest part of our system. There's a bajillion fields in here. And if we had all of these boxes checked, then that would be a nightmare. There would be so much stuff that we'd be looking at. It would be overwhelming. So we can customize what we're able to see here. So let's say I don't need to see these fields, but I do need to see this field. Well, I can go ahead and check those boxes and uncheck them as needed. And now I'm looking at different fields here. Now you can do this in any part of the system, just like you can do the reordering thing that I just showed you in any part of the system and also in any view. All right, so let's do a quick review. Required add-ons are intended to give you needed information about an order, and they're good for things like someone's free snow cone syrup flavor choice. And suggested add-ons are for upselling. 
Now, even if you are using a required add-on, you can still upsell by attaching a suggested add-on to the items that are in the required add-on. So for example, here with our snow cone machine, we've got the required add-on of snow cone free flavor choice. And these are the choices that are in that add-on. So we've attached a different suggested add-on to these choices so that when someone puts a snow cone machine in their cart and then they choose their free flavor, they see the additional snow cone flavor suggested add-on. And you can make as many add-ons as you want, use them for either required or suggested purposes, and get really, really strategic about how you upsell. You can also use the Customize button to decide what field you do and don't need to look at at any point in time. You can use the search field to narrow down what you're looking at as well. You can click on any menu heading to reorganize items alphabetically according to that heading. And you can make edits straight here from the menu screen by using spreadsheet mode, which saves you time. Oh, and I almost forgot last but not least, in browse mode, you can use the copy feature to save yourself time when you're entering a new item or a new entry that has similar characteristics to the item or entry that you're copying. So that's going to do it for this training. I hope this was helpful. As always, please do feel free to like and subscribe to the ERS YouTube channel so you never miss out on any of these updates. We've got a part three video coming out soon, so please stay tuned for that. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.